repetition structures allow you to create loops and repeating processes in PHP. There are three basic kinds of repetition structures. The first we'll look at is a for loop. It is a pretest loop that consists of the keyword for and code within braces. By saying it is pretest, we mean that it tests for a condition first, and if that condition is true, it will iterate or repeat. If that condition is false, it will not. The second type of structure we'll look at is a while true loop. It also is a pretest loop that consists of the keyword while and code within braces. Finally, we'll examine a do while loop. And this is a post test loop. That means that it will perform the test after executing. So you can be guaranteed that a do while loop will execute at least once. And it consists of the keywords do and while and code within braces. For loops have three basic parts. The first is initialization. The second is the condition. And the third is the update. So for example, if you look at the following code, the first part, the initialization, is within the parentheses after the for. And that is where the variable x is assigned an initial value of zero. The next part, the condition, is in the middle between the two semicolons. And the condition in this case is as long as x is less than five, and if that's true, the for loop will continue to iterate or repeat. The last part is the update or the action performed at the end of each repetition or iteration of the for loop. In this case, x will receive a postfix increment. So what will happen here is the echo statement will simply be called five times, at which point once x is five, it will no longer be less than five, and the for loop will stop executing. What will happen is it will display an HTML line break and display the value of x's and count up as zero, one, two, three, four. Now, notice that since we're starting at zero as the initial value, we will only go up until four, because once x becomes five, it is no longer less than five, but equal to five, and we will fall out of the loop. This illustrates a common mistake known as the fence post era, where as humans, we tend to think of always starting at one, but a lot of times in programming, we start at zero. Some other people call this an off by one era. Also remember, for loops are pretest repetition structures. They test for the condition at the beginning of the loop before they iterate. And if the condition is false, then they won't repeat or execute the code at all within their curly braces. Let's break down a basic for loop. If we look at the example code here, we have a variable num weapons that starts out with an initial value of 10. Now we're going to create a selection structure in HTML, but we're going to write it out dynamically using PHP. To do this, we place the echo statement within a for loop, and we want this for loop to iterate 10 times. So look at the parts of our for loop. After the keyword for in the parentheses, we have the initialization, which is x starts out at zero. Then we have the condition being tested for, which is as long as x is less than num weapons, which in the example is 10. And then finally, third, we have the update or the action, which is a post fix increment of x. Within the body of the for loop, the code that will be repeated or iterated through is that the echo statement will be called. And in the selection structure, it will simply add weapon 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And finally, we close the structure when we get outside the for loop. Now that we're on the topic of repetition structures, let's take a look at a basic for loop, which is a pre-test loop. In other words, it evaluates the condition first before executing the code. So if the condition is false, it's possible the code may never execute. A for loop, of course, begins with the keyword for, and there are three basic parts. So remember there's the initialization part, the first part. The second part is the condition being tested for. And the third part is the update or action. So the initialization part in this instance means that X will start out at zero. The condition part is this loop will keep looping until X is no longer less than the number of weapons, which is 10. And the update portion is simply going to post fix increment X. So this loop is going to iterate or repeat 10 times, zero through nine. And if we run the example, you'll be able to see it. And in this case, notice we created a selection structure. We have weapons zero through nine, and they were added in our for loop dynamically as options to our HTML selection structure. So in one line of code, we're able to add 10 lines of HTML, or that is to dynamically generate 10 lines of HTML. And again, 
If we look at the HTML code sent to the client instead of the PHP code on the server, you can see multiple options here, 10. Next, we're going to analyze a while true or while loop. While loops usually initialize a variable outside the loop structure. They test for a condition at the beginning and they update the variable somewhere within the loop body, usually at the end. So if you look at the example code here, the initialization part is no longer inside the parentheses as it would be if it were a for loop. Instead, it's outside the while true loop. X is initialized to be zero. The condition part is still in parentheses, so we have the keyword while, and then parentheses, it's while X is less than five. And the update portion is also not in parentheses, but it's inside the body of the while true loop itself, usually at the end, as in this example, and we're post fix incrementing X. So what will happen? Well, X starts out at zero, as long as x is less than 5, the while true loop will continue to iterate or repeat, and then add 1 to it at the very end. So it will simply add a line break in HTML with the echo statement and say the value of x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it will break out of or exit the while true loop. While loops are pre-test repetition structures. They test for the condition at the beginning of the loop. To break down a while true loop, Let's look at the following example code. We have two variables, num weapons, which is initialized to 10, and weapon count, which is zero. We start out creating a table header and a table row. Now, within the while true loop, we're going to iterate or repeat 10 times. Why? Because the condition being tested for is while weapon count, which currently is zero, is less than num weapons, which now is 10. So zero through nine, or 10 iterations or repetitions in the loop. Inside the loop body between the curly braces, we have an if statement, which says if weapon count evaluates to weapon count divided by two, then add the HTML code for a table row. Now, after that, we are going to echo a table cell, zero through nine, so in this case, 10 cells, which will have the weapon count number in these cells. And finally, at the bottom, we're again going to test and see if weapon count evaluates to weapon count divided by two, in which case we'll add another row every two. Then we're going to increment weapon count, that's our update, which will eventually cause us to fall out of the while true loop. And finally, at the very end, outside the while true loop, we're going to close off the table row and the table. Here we have a while true loop. And a while true loop, like a for loop, is a pre-test repetition structure. That is, it evaluates first, and if it's true, then the code inside the braces will be executed. But if it's false, it's possible that the code would never be executed. Now, every while true loop has the keyword while. It has a condition that goes inside parentheses. So just like a for loop, where you have the two semicolons and the conditions in the middle, but with the while true, it's the only thing that goes in the parentheses. And also like a for loop, you have a variable that you initialize, usually outside the while true loop, and then you perform some type of an update, in this case, a post fix increment. So if you were to compare the for loop and the while true loop, they have the same basic parts, but the for loop consolidates everything uh, into the parentheses that come right after the for keyword, whereas the while true loop kind of spreads everything out a little bit. So in this case, this loop is going to iterate 10 times, and that's because num weapons has a value of 10, whooping count starts out as one. And it's simply going to generate uh, an HTML table. And here we, are just trying to make it so that we will create rows every time we divide number of weapons by two plus one. If that's what weapon count equals, then we're going to close off a row and start another row. So let's see how that looks when we run the code through the PHP interpreter. And you can see here's our weapons open one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here's the first row, and then here's the second row. So again, let's kind of walk through the wall true loop and see why does this look this way or how does this code work that way? Well, in the wall true loop, we've already started our table in our first row. We just haven't closed it off yet, right? So the first thing we do is, well, is weapon count less than or equal to the number of weapons? Well, sure it is, because it starts out as one and then weapons is 10. So we're going to iterate 10 times. Then we want to perform a test here is weapon count equal to the number of weapons divided by two plus one? That just makes that dynamic. In other words, half. Number of weapons is 10. If I divide it by two, that's gonna give me five, and then I'm gonna add one to it, six. 
I'm sort of off by one issue there, but if it is, I'm going to close off the row, and then I'm going to start a new row, okay? So if I do that, again, if I come over here, one, two, three, four, five, close off this row, and then start the next row. So you can hopefully see how that works, right? Then we get down here, and we're going to simply display the results of weapon count, the integer value. And we're going to concatenate it to the string literal weapon. And we're going to close the row. So each one of these is, a, excuse me, not row, cell. We're going to close the cell. So each one of these is a cell. There are 10 cells. The update portion, we're going to post fix increment weapon count, which means the next time we wrap around and iterate through the while true loop, instead of being one, it'll go two, three, four, five, and so on. Finally, we're going to close the last row, that second row there, and close the table. And again, I'll display the HTML results, and I'll show you the HTML source that was written by the PHP code. Finally, let's examine do while loops. Do while loops usually initialize a variable outside the loop structure, test for a condition at the end, and update the variable somewhere within the loop body. So if you look at the example, we have a variable x initialized to zero outside of the do while structure. We have the keyword do and open and closing curly braces. Any code that we put here between these braces will iterate or be repeated however many times we specify within the do while structure. Now, unlike a for loop or a while true loop, which are pre-test conditions, this is a post-test condition. So even if the condition is false, we're guaranteed that the code inside of the do block will execute at least one time. In this case, we're going to echo a HTML line break and display the value of x. So it will count up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to update x inside of the do block. And finally, at the bottom, we have the keyword while and the condition part in parentheses while x is less than 5. Again, unlike a for loop, unlike a while true loop, which are pretest, a do while loop is a post test repetition structure. So it guarantees the code that you put within the curly braces will be used at least once. Here in this example, we're doing the exact same thing that we did with the while true loop. However, it's a do while loop. The code looks similar, except that the repeating or iterating code is within the do block. And then the condition is at the bottom. Again, in this way, we can be guaranteed that the code would execute at least one time, even if the condition were false. Finally, our third type of repetition structure is a do while loop. Unlike a for loop and a while true loop, which are pretest repetition structures, a do while loop is a post test repetition structure. And what we mean by that is the code in the do block will be executed first before anything is tested or compared. So therefore, even if it's false in the condition, the code is guaranteed to be executed at least once. It starts out with the keyword do. The code that we want to repeat goes inside the do block. Then we have the keyword while, and the condition goes in parentheses, just as it would with a while true loop. Okay. So we're doing something similar to what we did in the previous example. Num weapons is 10, weapon count starts out at just one, that's its initial value. And we're going to keep looping or iterating through this until weapon count is no longer less than or equal to the number of weapons. So what happens in our loop? Well, if weapon count is three or five or seven or nine, then we're gonna close off a row. So in this case, we're creating multiple rows and each a uh, cell is going to display weapon, and then that will be concatenated to the integer value of weapon count. So one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So let's see how that looks when we pass it through the PHP interpreter. Again, here's our table. Weapon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So here's the HTML results. I'll show you the HTML source. And here's the PHP code that generated that HTML source and sent it to the client. 